What is going on, everybody? This is Gabriel Jones giving you a drop of sun any chance I get. And today we have a brand new album reaction. This one from Zach Bryan, his self-titled album. It's been a while since I've done a country album reaction. I think the last one might have been Bailey Zimmerman, all the way back in November. Well, perhaps I should dip my toe inside the genre again. And this week's biggest release comes to us from Zach Bryan. The man hails from Oklahoma and served in the U.S. Navy for seven years. His honorable discharge was even one year before he broke out in 2022. That was when Something in the Orange blew up in the country scene, and boy, did this song have a successful chart run. It didn't even leave the Hot 100 until I think a few weeks ago, like that's how massive this tune was. Before this week, Something in the Orange was the only song I really knew from Zach Bryan, but after realizing just how much buzz the self-titled album was getting, I knew I had to get in on it. To prepare for the video, my buddy Fanstar was generous enough to provide me some Zach Bryan essentials, and it was delightful. I appreciated the blend of folk rock and country that just made every single track flow seamlessly, and it just felt like I was relaxing on my porch as the sun was setting. I might get a lot of that with the new LP, but I am curious to see what else Zach Bryan is going to pull off with this new release. Before we get started though, I want to advise everyone to leave a like and comment for the video because the more engagement the video receives, the more likely YouTube will pick it up in the algorithm, so I thank y'all for that. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I could use all the support in the world and I would put a huge smile on my face. With all that said, be sure to grab your wrinkly ass shirt <laughs> and let's get into the self-titled album from Zach Bryan. Track number one, Fear and Fridays, Poem. Giving us that relaxing guitar that we've become used to. I'd say to. I've seen, I don't need a music machine telling me what a good story is. As a matter of fact, I've never asked nothing from nobody. Mm, just laying it hard out for the listeners to hear. And excess never leads to better things. It only piles and piles on top of things that are already abundantly in front of you. Like breathing and chasing. Life lessons, life lessons, I like that. Excess is no good. If anyone I find kindness and I do not and will not fear tomorrow because I feel as though today has been enough. Mmm, finding the good people to surround yourself with. Alright, Fear and Friday's poem. That is an interesting way to start off the record, I gotta say. So easily what stands out is that this is sort of like a spoken track that he's doing right here. I think he even sort of acknowledges that, you know, I don't need to sing these words in order to make them sit with my audience. I really like what he's laying out for people to hear, you know, don't let excess get to you, it just piles up. It's not a good way to escape your problems. It only just makes them even more severe. Saying he doesn't fear tomorrow because he has everything else to reflect on that happened today. It's him being content with the future. He's experienced enough bumps in the road in life to really know how to like control how he feels about them, you know, how to cope with them. He's really emphasizing that he's been on a journey, that he's seen some stuff and he's ready to lay out those experiences for everyone else. Perhaps he's setting up the themes that he's going to explore throughout the rest of the LP. That's a possibility, but we'll just have to keep listening and see if that happens. Track number two, Overtime. It sounds like we're at a NASCAR race of some kind. <laughs> Cheering on his boy Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Ooh, yes, the thunderous drums paired with the trumpet. Such an American sound. Sorry to hear about that, Zach. It's never fun, devastating, but I hope you're coping well. <laughs> Giving himself credit for not letting the conceit go to his head. <laughs> and then something in the orange came around. <laughs> I really like how he plays with his voice there in the audio. You know, really stands out. It's so gritty. Okay, so that was Overtime. Yes, all right. Our first actual musical <laughs> track of the record, you know, technically speaking. This song it seems to show Zach singing about all the hard work that he's put into his life, all the adversity he had to face down, the world telling him he's never gonna make a name for himself, even though he is now one of the hottest country stars in the scene at the moment. He's gonna put himself out there, really take on life, and who knows, maybe he'll even have a sweetheart to share his life with. 
acknowledging that there's many bad struggles that you have to deal with. You know, some can be very life altering, but you find your way through it. And with enough pushing, you could really find something that you really want. For some reason, this just has like such an American spirit to it. <laughs> I don't know if like that description is totally accurate, but I get the feeling, you know? And of course, I love the instrumentation that he has going on here, especially the trumpets. Like that is a nice little touch. I don't think I heard much of that on American Heartbreak, but the fact that he's using it here is just so glorious. Of course, he always knows how to work his acoustic guitar. No real comments there. Yeah, this really sets up the mood for the whole listen, and I am very jazzed up about it now. Track number three, Summertime's Close. Bringing in the harmonica, yes. Perfect for sundown. Hmm, it's very intimate looking like he's singing at the moment. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> just setting up a perfect scene, like this is real I lost faith in the world a long time. I mean, I may not have much trust in the world, but I have trust in you. That's how you know you're special. You're the waves crashing down on the eastern coast. Let me tell you something, those waves in Martha's vineyard really are strong, so I know what he's talking about. Okay, so that was Summertime's Close, and you know what? Now that I'm like really reading more into the lyrics, I think I have like a totally different understanding of what he's singing about. At first I thought he was just like doing like an intimate acoustic uh, love song of some kind, but I then listened to the line, my blood rushed to the heart, you were my last hope. So that has me thinking, what if he's paying tribute to someone who's no longer with him? Could it be a girlfriend or an ex-girlfriend who's deceased or at the least has broken up with him and he misses her deeply? Um, that could be a possibility. Maybe it's also about a family member who passed away and now he's just reminiscing on the memory. When he sings about summertime being close, it's sort of like they spent their summertime together and created all these fond memories and really had a blast with each other, but now that they're gone, it doesn't seem like he's able to recapture that magic. The moment can't be recreated because there's no one else with me anymore. He's talking about drinking beer and dancing for two, meaning he's gonna, you know, dance and keep someone else's spirit inside of his heart. When you really, like, sink your teeth into, like, the meat of these lyrics, it becomes a lot more heartbreaking and more bittersweet. He's really able to paint that picture where you know, he's playing his harmonica and strumming his guitar, and it's, it's almost like we're sort of like relaxing near the fireplace, or maybe even on the porch, like I said before. It's a relaxing scene that's being established, but there's a sense of heartbreak to it also, because he just doesn't have anyone to share it with. I have to commend Zach Bryan for the way he's able to really paint a picture, you know, establish a setting for where his music is being sung. It really allows you to immerse yourself into his tunes even further. And I do have to point out the irony of him releasing an album with a song, Summertime's Close, in August, when summer is just coming to a close. <laughs> Overall, this is some really great work. Like, yeah, this is like a really big highlight for me. Track number four, East Side of Sorrow. Mm, kind of in his like angsty teen era, perhaps. Mm, praying to the Lord to help him through a very hard time. He is just devastated by the loss of someone close to him. Mm, I really like how he's bringing in that electric guitar, you know, igniting the excitement. Mmm, that violin, oh my god, like that wistful energy it brings, Woo! Really like the percussion too, like the way he's just tapping his drumsticks, just feel it in your bones. Wow, the trumpets right there, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so East Side of Sorrow. That is just another really heartbreaking song. This track sees Zach Bryan dealing with a lot of devastating events, like a lot of tragedy. Like he had a friend in the US Navy who tragically was killed. 
like he was in the waiting room for about two weeks and then the doctor broke the tragic news. Even when he was fighting in the U.S. Navy, he had no idea what he was getting into. He didn't even know what the war was for and he was constantly praying to God to like help him through this difficult time. It's always a roller coaster of emotions to deal with. I mean, I don't have any close family members who have fought in the military or the army. But like I would imagine like whenever you're being shipped off to war, you have no idea if you're gonna survive, if we're gonna come back all in one piece, if uh, anything is gonna change in the family dynamic as you're out overseas. There's just so much uncertainty when you're a soldier, you know, dealing with the war. And I think Zach Bryan was really able to convey that to the listener. Like he really finds himself confronting all of that depression in the verses. But then once we get to the chorus, you know, he finds himself talking to God, receiving an answer. He's being told that, you know, just keep pushing forward. The sun is going to rise up tomorrow. You're going to find your way through all of this, you know, and everything is going to look up. And, you know, I really love how the excitement really picks up in the chorus where, you know, he strums his guitar a lot quicker, a lot more rapidly. And then we get the trumpets, which are just phenomenal. Like, I don't recall hearing that many trumpets on American Heartbreak. Maybe I'm forgetting that there were but like they're really standing out to me here. Like I really enjoy them. This is some great work from Zach. Oh God, I really can't get enough of these songs. Track number five, Hey Driver, featuring the war and treaty. Mmm, very folksy with singing. <laughs> Just tight it off. <laughs> oh man, you must feel really confident if you're gonna fight with God. I really kind of like how their voices blend right there, you know? There's a real kindred spirit going on. Mm, the piano's right there. Oh, so pure in their form. For some reason, I keep thinking that's Chris Stapleton, but he sounds so much like him. Yeah, I mean, Travis probably thinks to himself, I guess I can go all night. <laughs> the raspiness right there. Ooh, I'm digging that. I'm digging that. I like that. Okay, so that was Hey Driver. That one is just a really chill song, I gotta say. From what I'm reading, I sense that it's a song where Zach... Mike and Tanya from the Warren Treaty are just sort of spilling their emotions to a taxi driver or an Uber driver even. They're dealing with a lot of emotions, a lot of uh, grievances, and they just want to just let it all out, you know, to anyone who might be around. There's not even a guarantee that the driver is listening, but it just gives them an opportunity to just sort of lay it all out, you know, unleash the emotions that they've been sort of bottling up. And after they've unleashed it, they're perfectly fine with getting off at their stop and just going off to whatever adventures await them. Instrumentally, I really dig the guitar still. Like, Zach Bryan really knows how to work that instrument. I also really love the pianos, like the way they escalate after the chorus and then just sort of de-escalate during the verses. That was just splendid. Mike Trotter, like, holy shit, like, he knows how to belt his voice. Like... He really brought a lot of energy to this song. Yes, I really like the sort of mood that this song is setting up. And yeah, it's a very relaxing song to listen to. Very delightful. Track number six, Fear and Fridays. Mmm. Sounds like Andrew Neiman is on these drums at the moment. We get the harmonica once more. Very appreciated. Mmm, the rigidness in his voice, like, Jesus. Seems like Friday brings out the absolute worst of him. Mmm, <laughs> the devastating hangover seems imminent. The bluesy guitar man, damn, I love it. Okay, so that was Fear and Fridays, and that just seems like a kind of song that you would sing at a bar. Zach Bryan appears to be singing about how Friday nights are the type of nights where the beast is unleashed. He gets his drinking on, having a nice glass of bourbon, and then he really, like, finds his buds, and they really just hit the town. It seems kind of interesting because 
in the first track, you know, he gets really emotional when speaking this poem about how he doesn't like Fridays. But here, it's almost like you know, we really gauge a look at what he's like on Fridays. You know, he gets really angry, he gets really energized. It's like the bad boy in him gets totally pumped up, you know? And that's for better or for worse. I really dig the bluesy guitar. I also love the harmonica. You know, I was kind of stomping my foot as the song was playing. I was really getting into it. Yeah, there's some uh, nice uh, little things that you could find on this song for sure. Track number seven, Ticking. Hmm, much slower song than what we heard previously. Oof, I feel like I'm getting in the feels again. Hmm, self-discovery can be a very tricky road to navigate. Okay, we got a tempo change, I like it. Mm -hmm. He feels like he's lived such a journey, you know, and it's only like mid-20s. Ticking! He just hates the passage of time. Okay, so that was Ticking, and yeah, that one is a very sort of uh, downer song. Zach is singing about how even at the age of 25, he finds it very difficult to sort of balance out the things in his life. He's on the road, touring across America, he's in Philadelphia, he's in Ohio, and he finds that his relationship isn't easy to manage when having that sort of lifestyle. He's cutting ties with the things that really give him joy, which is, in this case, his girlfriend, and it just really stinks him to do it. He's reflecting on just how far he's come in life, you know, he has childhood friends who still talk to him as if he's that same young kid that they knew him as. He's sort of realizing that he doesn't have it all perfect, even though he's really come far in adulthood at this point. And yeah, you can really sense the pain in his voice as he's sort of like calling it quits uh, on his relationship. The wistful violin is of course fantastic. Guitar work is splendid as always. Yeah, I, I think this song is really good. Track number eight, Holy Roller, featuring Sierra Farrell. Mm-hmm. Very romantic, you know? Just sharing a feeling of love. Mm. This just does feel like a road trip, honestly. You know, talking about trips leaving town. We're really on the road with them. Ooh! Really like how they hit those high notes right there. <laughs> we don't want your tourist ass fucking up our fun time. <laughs> mm, I really like how Sierra's singing right here. It's very nice. All right, so that was Holy Roller. And yeah, that one is a very relaxing song, I gotta say. Zach and Sierra sing with each other throughout the entire run, and they're just, you know, showing the feelings of affection and really talking about how they want to live a life on the road together, you know, just spend some time being intimate and, you know, just enjoying each other's company. Again, it really does feel like we're on a road trip with them, you know, just driving down the highway at a very fast pace, uh, just taking in the atmosphere, just taking in the scenery. I really like the line, keep your rich hands out of our plans, you know? It's sort of like they're talking to tourists or whatever, you know, just saying, hey, we don't want you to fuck up our energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, this one is very relaxing. I like the uh, guitar work on this one. Not too complicated, just very simple, very effective. Good stuff. Track number nine, Jake's Piano, Long Island. You know, it just doesn't feel the same without you. You know, you just left, like, an entire vacancy. Mmm, the organ. Really bringing us that blues, the blues. Mmm, love the piano melodies, honestly. Like, they are expert. Okay. This seems to be part two of, of the track, Long Island Now. Mmm, okay, we're bringing in some drums now. We're really amplifying it. That 
hope has just dwindled from you like a drain. Ooh! I love the way the drums build up right there. Oh, God! So epic. This is the stadium-like energy that's coming in now. Love it. Ooh! Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god, that was exhilarating. Oh, wow. Wow, I love that. Mmm. He's just like very like burnt out at this point with his sadness. Okay, so Jake's Piano and Long Island. Okay, that was the track. It's a very lengthy track, but it's separated into two parts. Jake's Piano seems to be a song where he's reminiscing on an old friend who's no longer with him. Like he moved out or perhaps he might even have passed away. My guess is that it's a friend of his named Jake or maybe even a family member named Jake. That's why they call it Jake's Piano. You know, he's sort of commemorating Jake by playing his piano and singing this song, which is very, very sweet. Like, if that's true, oh, my heart aches. Even though he's passed on, his memory still lingers. He still remembers all the fond memories that they shared. And yeah, that is just something that's is very, very heavy for me to think about. Then we have Long Island, which is sort of him singing about a former lover that he had. And you could tell because they sing about holding hands, his gentle hands, and now they've sort of, you know, moved on. They sort of moved out of Long Island, I believe. And he's just sort of coping with that very, very hard. Like, you know, he's sort of downing alcohol more often than he should. And yeah, he just finds it very uh, difficult to deal with. I think the reason why he put Jake's piano and Long Island on a track together is because they both have this theme of change going on. They're about dealing with very difficult moments in your life and finding a way to move forward, finding a way to cope. Zach is learning how to move on now that Jake has passed away, now that his girlfriend is no longer dating him. And he's finding that there are being very real struggles for him. There's too much turmoil for him to sort of navigate his way through, to sort of push through. and. Yeah, that's just so beautifully heartbreaking. Jake's piano is a lot more somber and soft with its tone, and then Long Island is just an explosion of anger, a lot of frustration going on. Yeah, this is like a really good track. Yeah, it's very brilliant. Like, props to you, Zach. Track number 10, El Dorado. I'm assuming this won't be a tribute to the early 2000s DreamWorks classic, but we can only hope. Ooh, the electric guitar paired with the violin. A nice little combo, I gotta say. Hmm, did you actually need to get out, or did you just dream for more, you know? Ooh! That electric guitar right there is just magnificent. I mean, I think I look more handsome than look here, but for now, I can't exactly throw it out. <laughs> Ooh, kind of like the melody right there, sort of ending the chorus, and this electric guitar solo is top notch. Okay, so that was El Dorado. I think he pronounced it differently. I don't uh, think I can say it right, but yeah, that song is pretty interesting. I like how they play with the electric guitar there, and the violins were also really top notch. Uh, a very good combo move. Lyrically, I think it's about a friend that he once knew who had very big dreams to make it out of the small town and do something big, but it seems like that never came to fruition, and so he sort of like came back home. At one point, Zach questions if uh, he's alive or not because he hadn't heard from him in ages, and he's just like, oh, the hell do I know if he's still alive? <laughs> he just kind of shrugs it off. But it seems like the uh, devil dog might have come back home after all. I will admit this song is stumbling me a little bit in the uh, lyrical department. So if people have different interpretations, if they could explain it to me, I'd love to know in the comments. But for now, we can just move on. Track number 11, I Remember Everything, featuring Casey Musgraves. This is the one I've been very excited for. Huge fan of Casey Musgraves. And I've heard this song is doing pretty well in the charts at the moment. So let's take a listen. Each time is on the grind line. Setting a scene once more, Who which he's great at. Hey, mmm. Kind of like a relationship that fell apart. Mmm. 
Wistful thinking. Ah. Uh, just gets to you, you know? Oh, man. Damn. Her voice is just so relaxing to listen to. Like, it's beautiful. And now they're together. Oh, my God. They work together so well. Oh, yes. Escalating his voice to a new tier. Oh, exhilarating. Okay, so that was I Remember Everything, and yeah, that song was a real jam, I gotta say. The guitar strumming was very nice, and I really like how it has that very wistful sort of atmosphere to it. The tone is very on point, but I also love the lyrics that are at play here. They're clearly playing a couple who have broken up at this point, and Zach Bryan is just remembering all these detailed memories of them together, you know? Setting a scene, like a broken down couch and a beach towel hanging on the drying rack. That was the home he would always visit whenever he would see Casey. And now it seems like he's not able to sort of like enter that scene no more. But when you cut a little bit deep into the surface, you'll find that the relationship might not have been that close. Casey is singing about how you were never the man that you said you were, but you looked very good in that Ford uh, vehicle. It's sort of like she's saying that you looked very good in the light, but when you actually pull back the curtain, you'll find that there really just isn't much substance to this guy, you know? He's just not the type of man that he built himself up to be. Zach sings about how you only smile like that when you're drinking. It's sort of like he's sort of emphasizing how inauthentic the relationship was overall. But they still share those memories with each other, even though they were never really that strong. It's just them saying how, you know, we had really good times together, but it didn't seem like we were gonna last. And now we're just left reminiscing on what we once had. We're not able to obtain what we once had, but uh, we're just kind of left sort of like stewing in that sort of uh, memory. Yeah, I really like this song. It's great. I really do hope it becomes a hit. Excellent collab. Track number 12, Tourniquet. Okay. Got a little high-pitched piano right here. Very interesting. Mmm. People can be very hard to please all the time. The way he held that note right there is just freaking beautiful. Mmm. Mm, you know, sort of like projecting your baggage onto other people. Wow! The freaking electric guitar right there. It's beautiful. Oh. Okay, so that was Tourniquet. Yeah, another very emotional song that we have on our hands. Zach Bryan is singing about this friend who's been going through a lot of struggles in his life. Like, he's losing weights at a rapid speed. He also went through a serious breakup, and it just feels like nothing is working out for him. But Zach is promising that he'll do everything he can to heal this person, you know, be by their side, have their back. You know, he even offers to put a tourniquet on them in case that the bleeding gets too out of control. I like that, you know, he's offering his friendship, he's lending a hand. It's really showing just how sturdy their bond is, you know, they're unbreakable. And I just love how he illustrates this entire tune. Like, he goes fucking hardcore with the electric guitar. It's just fantastic. And the, you know, cymbal tapping also is splendid. Oh my god, yeah. A lot of great instrumentation here. Like, this is like a pure rock song right here. Just really getting it on. This one I'm gonna really have a fun time listening to again. Uh, it's very energized. It makes me want to nod my head. Oh my god, yeah. Fantastic. Track number 13, Spotless, featuring the Lumineers. You know, just having a relaxing guitar to open the song. <laughs> Wesley Schultz giving that F-bomb decision right there on the music. <laughs> Ooh, I love those bass notes right there. Like really adding, adding some weight to the song. Zach and Wesley, they have a great sense of blending together. Like, oh my god, their vocals work well. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's living the life right there. 
Mmm, <laughs> the piano just is so dramatic. Wow. All right, so that was Spotless. Yeah, that song is really interesting. Yeah, I really love the way it's constructed. The pianos are incredibly dreary. They add a lot of emotion to the song. That's definitely uh, thanks to the Lumineers. Like, I recognize that sort of sound from them. It is nice to hear the Lumineers again. I remember doing an album reaction to their uh, LP, Bright Side, even though I didn't really understand the lyrics all that much, although I did admire the instrumentation. <laughs> But this song is pretty easy to decipher. Wesley and Zach are singing about being in a relationship with another woman, and they seem to have some strain going on, like they're not communicating with each other very well, but they're gonna see it through because, you know, people aren't exactly perfect, and there are times where you're gonna deal with struggles in your relationship, but you're always gonna find a way to see it through. It's always gonna work out in the end, and it's all worth it. A pretty optimistic song, if I gotta say. Acknowledging that there is some real uh, difficulties that could come along the way, but there's always a way to navigate through it. The Lumineers have always been really good at capturing a scene with very intricate details, you know, very folksy kind of details. And yeah, that's why they work with Zach Bryan so well, you know, they sort of have this Americana sound going on with both of them. Yeah, they work hand in hand. Overall, it's a really good song, probably the best I've heard from the Lumineers on this channel. It gets two thumbs up for me. Track number 14, Tradesmen. There's kind of like a real hometown spirit to this guitar playing right here. Look at me so strange when I talk. Wow, the echo that's being projected right now really sounds like we're in like a big space room. Ooh, I love the electric guitar right here. Ooh, yes! Very climactic right now. Mm hmm He's authentic, unlike all those other wealthy motherfuckers. Mm. Love how hard the drums go. It's just fantastic. Okay, so that was Tradesmen. Uh, that one, I think, is stumping me a little bit. Maybe it's about Zach Bryan wishing that he had a more simplistic life. You know, making something out of his life, you know, unlike a lot of other wealthy men who are, you know, chilling and relaxing with their millions and millions of dollars. Perhaps it's another song about fearing change and going back to your old town and seeing how everyone has just altered. Instrumentally, I really like it. The thunderous drums and the electric guitar, and it's all paired with Zach's acoustic instruments. Yeah, it all sounds very lovely. I just wish that I knew the lyrical content a lot more. I'll probably get it more on my second listen, but for now, I think we're just gonna move on. Track number 15, Smaller Acts. Hard workers, you know. Beefy. Mm -hmm. They should do it with iced beer. That down to earthness. Love it. Mm. You know, there's just nothing like it. Ooh, you kind of hear some animals croaking in here, here and there. <laughs> Really setting a scene once more. Okay, now it kind of sounds like he's playing this in a different setting. You know, the audio quality is a lot different. It's almost like he's playing this outside. Okay, so that was Smaller Acts. Uh, yeah, that one is very sweet, I gotta say. Like, very, very sweet. It's a song talking about how Zach Bryan has this woman in his life who doesn't exactly like big grand gestures, nothing too luxurious, nothing too fancy or exquisite. You know, she just likes very simplistic type of acts. She likes honey in her coffee. She likes dinner waiting for her at the table. She likes boys who really know how to put in their muscle work. He's really describing the perfect woman for him. Or maybe someone else, you know, maybe it's his mom or something, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like she's a very sweet lady. Nothing too complex when it comes to the instrumentation. It's just his acoustic guitar again, and a few like uh, animals like sort of chirping or croaking in the background. Perhaps there were like some frogs nearby when he recorded this tune, who knows. It's definitely meant to be stripped back as much as possible, so you can really tell that he's singing it from the hearts. 
and I think he uh, really did excel with that. So now I think it's time we get into the closing track of the self-titled LP. Track number 16, Oklahoman Sun. Ooh. I love the opening melody for this. I can already tell it's gonna be a good one. Mmm, how could you ever love a guy like me? Oh wow, really getting intense right here. It's good to know the city life didn't exactly transform you as much as you thought it would. Even though I've achieved a lot of success, I won't make up for everything that I wasted in my old life. Oh, going hard with the acoustic guitar now. Damn. Okay, so that was Oklahoma and Sun, and yeah, that one is pretty good for a uh, closer. Zach Bryan is sort of like telling himself that no matter how uh, high you get in life, no matter how much success you achieve, you know, there's always going to be that Oklahoma spirit within you. You're never going to forget your roots, and that's very important to remember. And yeah, I really like how he kind of displays that pride on the music. Reflecting on all the activities that he would do, like fishing and getting into fights, and just realizing that, you know, that's always going to be a part of you. You know, that's always like a part of your story. And you might grow out of it a little bit, but, you know, just knowing that those memories always are going to be in here. It's a nice, sweet little song to end the record with. It kind of reminds me of when Kane Brown recorded Dear Georgia as his closer, you know, remembering that he always has roots in that state and always remembering where he came from. I kind of like how Different Man and Zach Bryan have those commonalities between them. And as always, the acoustic guitar, excellent work. I love how intensely he plays it during the break. It was very, very swell. Yeah, I gotta say, this is some pretty good work to end the album with. So I think I'm now gonna take a break. I'm gonna let the album sit with me. I'll listen to it a second time, and then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So bear with me. <sighs> All right, so I am back and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts on Zach Bryan's self-titled album. One of the reasons I record reactions to country music so sparingly is because I find it very hard to find an artist that I can really grasp onto. Every once in a while, a Kane Brown or Bailey Zimmerman will follow my radar, but scouting out a country singer who's doing something unique can be pretty tricky. Luckily, Zach Bryan has been able to fulfill that duty. On this record, it's quite impressive how he's able to capture a mood with such minimal instrumentation. For starters, he utilizes his signature guitar so expertly, making it a core part of his identity as a performer. He knows how to control the intensity of his strumming, adding heartbreak or excitement to his music. Other instruments that are appreciated are the trumpets, the electric guitars, and the violins. He also knows how to take advantage of his featured artists, some that I know and some that I'm new to. When I listen to this album, I see a man who, while still pretty young, has faced a ton of life experiences. He had to face down adversity to achieve success as a musician. He had to end serious relationships because his career was getting in the way of his love life. Most tragically though, he had to say goodbye to people he held close, finding it difficult to navigate life after an unfortunate death had occurred. The amount of introspection he's capable of is amazing. After all, he served in the Navy for seven years, and having an experience like that can really give you a new perspective on life. Now that he's honorably discharged, he's finding a way to make a good life for himself. And with the audience he's building, I have total confidence in him. My favorite tracks would have to be East Side of Sorrow, Jake's Piano, Long Island, and Hay Driver. My least favorites would have to be El Dorado, Fear on Friday, and Tradesman. And that just about does it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this album reaction. I had a blast with it. I haven't done country in a while, but it's good that I dipped my toe into it again. And I hope you had fun too. If you want to follow me on social media, be sure to check out my Twitter, my Blue Sky, my Twitch, and my TikTok. The links are going to be in the description. And that's where we're wrapping up for today. My name is Gabriel Jones, and the sun may be setting, but I hope you were able to soak up those drops. Take care.